Professor Himadri Ghosh, next speaker. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, there, has, there have been so many speakers before me who have talked a lot of things which I wanted to say. So I don't want to repeat that. So I have to redesign my, my delivery today, just now. I actually am wearing three hats. One, as a mentor of Craft Village, which is an NGO, uh, to, I'll just tell you the work there. And the second hat I wear is of a designer. And I'm one of the first students from an ID which came out early in the 60s. And the third hat is of an educator. Now, I just want to actually talk about uh, not this right now, because this is what uh, was regarding the craft village involvement. Craft, actually, you can divide it into two basic groups. One, which is making things for production as such, like I saw some presentation earlier. But the craft we are talking about is something which a person, craftsman, is proud to have it, proud to deliver it. He does his own touch, even when, when it was started a long time back. It was his touch, a, some, a personal touch was more important. That means craft had emotional appeal. Today, the craft has actually become something on the, on the pavement. It is who are responsible for it? We. It is not the craftsman to be blamed. It's a market. It is we. We have not given adequate importance to our own heritage, our own. We are not protecting uh, craft. I mean, there is one, one sector which is manufacturing. There I agree. But I'm talking about craft, which is actually a cultural heritage of yours. It's an identity of yours. I think that is the one we are talking about right now. So, can we go now? Yeah. So the, as, I, as I said, the, the biggest issue today in that particular craft is the value. Why, why as we go forward, you know, we had all today, everybody is talking about the craftsman giving it. The craftsman does not require reskilling. He doesn't require. It is the question is, the, we need to add value to it. The craft sector which I'm talking about is actually second only to agriculture in the village. I stay in a village, in a, in a, a university, which is a women's university, which has a very different objective of educating women and giving them jobs or give them money to start their own. Now, so why, why I have gone there is only to have a, to get change agent made, made, you know, make change agent. Because today the rural economy requires change agent. Whatever we saw are small, small action. How do you transform into something which is more mass produced, something the whole, whole of village or all villages here? We require that mass, that critical mass of change agent. So our thing should start from education right from education, not from the craftsman. So we need at present, because if we don't revisit craft, we'll kill the greater craft which we have. And I suppose at present, craftsmen are the real backbone of the non-farm rural community. We are about 200 million artisans. We have a lot of design houses who are making handmade products. But even then, we have Delhi Heart and Daskar, all of them, uh, Fab India. But still, we have big, huge gap. And, and again, if you see, every year, about 30% of the, 30% uh, of the uh, craftsmen go back to maybe making roads. So anyway, let's leave the craft for a while and I'll go to the, put on my designer hat and give you some of the, um, because the time is running out, uh, 
uh, some of the had uh, some of the uh, experience of mine. One experience is in Banaras for a for a uh, um, an NGO called Jula. Banaras is we think we give it to a weaver and uh, the middleman takes all the money. What we did was we chose a family, five families, right from design to implementing and chose a, a guy from there who can do market. And we did marketing, developed the product in the five families, took them to Pratipota in Paris, make them capable of designing, I mean, marketing their own. So we took every year a five families and make them in the market. So now they are absolutely independent of their own and they are making of their money. So this is one of the, one, one is a, this is one of the, our sample. Second one was, uh, my passion was of the women who do not go out of the house. Uh, the uh, handicapped who cannot go out of the house and earn, and senior citizen who also cannot go out of the house and earn. Now uh, these three live a life without dignity. But as Gandhiji found out, yes, they can spin. But spinning today, 120 grams or 230 grams is maximum they can spin. That does not give them any money. So how? Is it to increase their, we give a power and to increase their spinning? No. We increase the value of the, of the material. And that we did by giving them a little twist to the spinning equipment so that they can make fancy yarn and which made their product more uh, important and unique so they, they got the money. So they have been linked with the directly with the internet, with the pay packet, and they are getting directly money in their own homes. So these are the, it is not the technology is not known to the people. We don't forget to last two, three years, village is no longer afraid of technology. You go to a Kutch desert, you'll see a lady with a sheep, with a, with a mobile. They know, they, they did not know the mathematics, now they know everything, they know, I think, Mobile has really made a big change in the rural economy. We are today, in my viewers from uh, remote corner, they give me a WhatsApp. We work only on WhatsApp, no order. We work everything here. So we work completely from a different centers, working everywhere in India. So I'm, not, I'm sure technology is not a, not a challenge for the rural sector. What I'm afraid of, we don't have enough people who can be change agent, who can take the technology, take all the, all the innovations which you have done to the villages. Thank you.